Nearly 60,000 trade visitors attended the first four days of the Singapore Air Show, eclipsing the previous record set in 2018 by 10%, said organizer Xperia Events. It clearly signals a renewed optimism and momentum driving the sector forward. Its managing director Lek Chat Lam said on February 23rd in a statement to mark the end of the show's four-day trade segment. The ninth edition of the Biennial Aerospace and Defence Exhibition began on February 20. Six years since the last full-scale show. COVID-19 disrupted the 2020 and 2022 editions. Mr. Lek told The Straits Times that visitors and exhibitors had only three words to describe the 2024 show, busy, busy, busy. The biggest bus was around China's homegrown Comac C919 narrow-body passenger jet, which made its international debut. Comac also kicked off the show with an order of 50 planes from Tibet Airlines. America's Boeing and Airbus from Europe announced their share of orders too. In all, Asia-Pacific carriers, including Thai Airways, Vietjet and Taiwan Starlux, bought 77 planes from the two companies. About 40 Chinese aviation companies took part in the 2024 show, and 31 of them joined hands to set up a country pavilion for the first time. This was organized by the Chinese Society of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And its vice president and secretary general, Dr. Yao Junchen, said discussions between the companies and trade visitors were active. We look forward to coming back on a bigger scale. He added in Mandarin. Mr. Lek said the air show offers the Chinese a platform to be connected with the rest of the Asia-Pacific and beyond. While Airbus said the C919 is not going to rock the boat and Boeing pointed to growing challenges Comac needs to overcome. Both recognized the competition the Chinese aircraft maker will pose. Dr. Yao said Comex's aim is to go global. If you use your civil aircraft only within your own country, it will be a huge failure. He added. Xperia said Singapore's plan to add a green fuel passenger levy for all departing flights from 2026, announced a day before the show, sparked extensive discussions. On the show's opening day, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore CES Chief Hon Kok Wan explained the move at a dialogue attended by about 70 people, saying the authorities here have no choice but to require airlines to use sustainable fuel, even though it will make air travel more expensive. Mr Hon said, it is really a matter of time that we would have to deploy sustainable aviation fuel in our respective airports. If you leave it to the passengers, it's going to be very difficult. Several sustainability announcements were made at the air show, including an agreement Airbus signed with the Economic Development Board EDB to open the way for a sustainable aviation hub to take root at Siltar Aerospace Park. With the show casting the spotlight on the topic of going green, Ms. Karina Kady, co-founder of Singapore firm Nandina Ram, which recycles materials from decommissioned aircraft, said people have come up to her to proactively look for sustainable solutions. I didn't realize there would be so much traction and interest that we are already looking at new customers. She added. Electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles EVTOLs were another talking point. Several deals were signed to advance the adoption of the technology in the region. Supernal, a subsidiary of South Korea's Hyundai Group, inked an agreement with EDB to develop research and development initiatives and identify potential uses for EVTOLs in Singapore. It also signed an agreement with CES to support the development of regulations and standards here and to engage the public. German EVTOL firm Lilium made a tentative deal with Fujets for the private aviation firm from the Philippines to buy 10 Lilium jets which are powered by electric motors. Embraer offshoot Eve Air Mobility 
also in Tadio, to study the potential for EVTOL flights in Southeast Asia. Mr. Taeyun Yuan, head of Asia Pacific at mobility firm Skyports, said international air taxi operations could kick off by the end of the decade. Others, such as Ms. Amanda Nelson, Director of Strategic Relationships for Advanced Air Mobility at Bristol Group, which deals in vertical flight solutions, say limited, small scale air taxi operations, could start within the next one and a half years. But for the technology to be commercialized in Singapore, scale will be key, said Mr. Tan Kohon, Chief Technology Officer and Senior Director of the Unmanned Systems Group at CES. Why would I facilitate the operations of aircraft with four passengers versus aircraft with 150 passengers? The scale is completely different, Mr. Tan said at a panel discussion. Even as the last vestiges of the pandemic recede, the issue of supply chains continued to haunt the trade floor in 2024. Supply chain is a common discussion that we have with everyone at this air show, be it air framers, airlines or leasing companies, Mr. Ewan MacDonald, Chief Customer Officer for Civil Aerospace at Aircraft and Jamaica Rolls-Royce. Told St. Airbus Commercial Aircraft Chief Christian Scherer said at a media roundtable that there are weak links at almost every level, noting bottlenecks with raw materials such as steel. On a positive note, a slew of aerospace maintenance, repair and overhaul MRO companies expanded their presence and capabilities here or announced plans to do so. Making the biggest splash was Singapore Aero Engine Services. A joint venture between Rolls-Royce and SIA Engineering Company, which announced a 180 million US dollars 242 million Singapore dollars expansion plan. A common refrain was Singapore's strategic importance and the value of its ecosystem. In the whole of Singapore, there is lots of MRO, lots of job creation happening, so I would say things are looking good, said Mr. McDonald of Rolls-Royce. Looking ahead to the 2026 air show, which will be the 10th organized by Xperia, Mr. Leck said artificial intelligence will be front and center. I'm sure that will be incorporated into Airshow 2026 as one of the focuses. He added.